Hi everybody, Jason from Casey Cardinia Libraries again, uh, back again for our Star Wars Day special on how to draw. Uh, we are currently going to work on another Imperial vehicle uh, from the famous Empire Strikes Back Hoth battle scene. Uh, we're going to draw the at, -AT walkers and I will show you how to do that. And just off the TIE Fighters, I'll tell you what we need first. So we would need an H pencil. I'm using an HB just so you can actually see what's happening on the camera, otherwise it might be too faint. But any H pencil, which is much lighter than B pencils, would be preferred. Um, and basically we lay that out uh, really loosely first, just onto the page so we can get the proportions correct. And then we'll put in the finer details with a B pencil. Uh, we will also need a sharpener. Make sure you have a very good one, a good quality sharpener, and also a very good eraser as well, which will help very much. And in the, for this particular one, uh, rulers are an option, but just see how you go. You may not need it. So with that, we'll get started. So what we're going to do is I'll try and draw what I'm drawing and then break it down into shapes as much as I can and just basically tell you the shapes that I see um, so you can really easily work out how to go about doing it. So first thing we're going to do is start with the main torso and pretty much an attached torso. So I'm going to shift a little bit to the right when I draw this because the head will stick out from the main torso and otherwise it will be off-centered. So you'll see what I mean afterwards. So I'm going to start just a little bit off the center of the page and just really quickly sketch these lines in. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of like a slightly slanted rectangle. And by slanted, I mean the lines kind of dip in just a little bit. And it's more of a rectangular shape than it is a square shape. And then the next thing we're going to do is draw the back. Now the back curves down a bit and it is actually not as wide as the front and then we are going to draw the next part which is thinner than the front section, the back section, sorry. So this section is thinner than that. And then you can just draw a straight line underneath. Just loosely sketch that out. And there we go. That's the main top section of the torso. And then the next section that we're going to need is the neck. Now the neck kind of just sticks up just a bit after this bottom point. And it's also just another rectangle. But we'll just loosely put that there and we won't fill it in for now. That will do. And then the next thing we're going to do is the head. Now, uh, AT-ATs are always seen with the head drooping down slightwards, uh, slightly downwards because they're attacking all the soldiers and infantrymen, men, and so we'll go for the same look. So to do that, I'm drawing the back of the head now and just tilt it in an angle a bit. And then the, it kind of curves inwards, but then it goes flat and it joins up to this section like that. And then we can add in all the laser cannons and the turbo blasters afterwards. So that's coming along. Now, next thing we need to draw in is the panel that covers the drive motors. Drive motors panel is kind of like this. And in case you're wondering where I'm getting all this terminology from, I actually have an old technical manual that was done in some old sci-fi magazines that you could buy for Star Wars. And it just shows you technical details of the all the vehicles and things, and it just gave you names of the parts on them. So that's really good. So hopefully I'm passing correct information to you. Okay, so the next section we're going to draw is drive motors, which is pretty much just the, they kind of look like the legs, but the very top section of them. And they kind of hide behind this panel so they stick out to only roughly about this length, half of this, and a little bit less than half of this. They don't go all the way to the front. They look a bit strange if they go all the way to the front. And think of it as like a rounded, tapered rectangle. It's rounded at the end and then it shrinks down smaller and they should be about the same length on both sides.
pretty wide. Make that a bit thicker. Okay, so this section should be a bit narrower than that section, which is correct. So the next thing we're going to do is draw in the legs. So I'm just quickly sketch this out. So it's another rectangle, and I'm just going to tilt this in an angle as well. It's probably easier to draw them straight, but drawing them in an angle makes them look like they're walking. And then it goes up here, but then it curves right at the top. And then we'll do the other one now as well. So do this side, this side, I'll make this one just a little bit straighter. Okay, rectangle shape, but curved at the top. Now for the next piece. So this joint and the next joint will always be straight along with each other. They'll never bend at this joint. The only time an at's legs bend is if there's a knee joint. One of these round joints that let it twist around. So again, these are just rectangular looking shapes. Same I'll do for this one. Making this one a little bit straighter. And the circle and knee joints are just slightly larger than the actual width of the legs themselves. And just keep in mind that from this section to this section, this one here to that one, this is thinner than this section. And likewise for this one. And also very important, try and get these areas lined up. Otherwise, they will be too long or too short and it will be very noticeable. I have done that a few times while I was trying to draw this. So I've learned from my mistakes quite a bit. Okay. Then the other thing we need to continue on with is the rest of the legs. And this one's going to look like it's taking a step. So it'll be a bit lifted off the ground. Again, so this and this part is roughly the same length. And also from here to here, it should roughly be about the size of the torso to the bottom of the panel. So that's about right. And that is exactly what we want. So you can try and measure that for yourself as well. Um, okay, so the next section is, there's a small bit that flares out here. And it's kind of a shape. And then there's another upside down one, but a smaller one that sits down here. For this leg, I'll finish off this leg first. So uh, then after that, for the smaller section, there's what I like to call suitcase handles, or even bag handles if you want, that come out to about here, just about halfway down, making almost half a circle, a semicircle. And there's actually like a bolt at the end, a very tiny one. And then the top pad of the foot, another rectangle, just sits here in position where it's kind of like in the middle of these bolts and the bolts actually go right through there to hold the foot up to let it swivel and then we're going to draw the bottom of the feet which is larger than that now the feet actually has a gap for where the toes come out of oh so it's taking a step so we'll draw the toes facing down and this also for the gap Okay, so I'm just making them flop down because it's taking a step off the floor. So for this one, we're going to make this one straighter, just by a little bit. And have this one firmly planted into the ground. As firm as we can get it in any way. So then we flare that bit upside down. And then, so these things are like the luggage strap, the uh, luggage handles, they go out a bit further than the feet, then they flare that bit. And same thing, draw the top of the foot pad, and then the two bolts that go through it, and then draw the bottom of the feet. Same thing with the toes. Now, because this one's sitting flat on the ground, these are just going to be flat rectangular looking pieces because they're not flopping down anyway. Unless if we wanted to change it into a bumpy terrain, then we can angle them down a bit. 
So this one looks like it's taking a step and this one's firmly planted in the ground and that is what I wanted, so that's correct. Now, the next thing that we need to do is at the back, we draw another rectangular piece and this is actually where the fuel fuel tanker is and it just curves around like a barrel here and then there's actually a piece that sticks out blocking that from probably an armor plating I guess that just blocks that off and one more thing we need to do before it looks like a proper AT-AT -AT walker is we need to give more detail to the head so once it comes around here it kind of sharpens off and we draw the viewing port that sticks out here, the red visor looking bits that looks like the eyes of the AT-AT. You -AT. can just do a little bit like a square bit that sticks out there and that'll work fine. And the next bit is, guess about this distance from here, this bit sticks up like that and then it curves around. flat and then there's a big round section which kind of looks like the ears and this is where the medium blasters are going to sit they are the guns that are on the side of the head and there's like an angled rectangle that goes down this way another bit that sticks out on top of that so these actually stick out from the side of the ears and then we do a rectangle for the barrel of the gun and then another smaller rectangle and then another smaller one so those are the medium blasters there and once we've drawn that in we can draw the rest of this line in and then there's three lines that go out here and then underneath it we are going to draw the big heavy laser cannons and there is another section down here it kind of overlaps the bottom line actually just like this, make this a bit bigger, and then right about there it curves up, angles in, sorry, and this one curves up. And now we get to draw the heavy laser cannons, which go in here, so another rectangle, and then thin our rectangle then right at the end it's kind of like this u-shaped thing that looks a bit like a tuning fork and those are the heavy laser cannons okay and so for all intents and purposes that's pretty much an AT-AT -AT walker very very basically but I'll show you how to deal with the other two legs at the back because otherwise that does look a bit strange but there's a really quick way we can go about doing this and that is we just quickly sketch this out and let's just make them straight this time I'm just going to quickly sketch this out okay because they're straight I'm going to try and line them up to this one. And then this one will make a little bit forward like it's also about to take a step like this one, but not so high. This one I still kind of want planted into the ground. So I'm just drawing all the same pieces again and because I've done it so many times now I pretty much remember it and you will get the hang of it too if you try to draw it a few times. Okay so we don't need to put too much on detail onto that one because what we're going to do is we're just going to shade this just slightly like this black so later when we're adding more details to it we don't really have to worry about it. Kind of cheating, but it also gives it a nice effect actually. Let's put this into the background. 
Okay, and I'm just lightly doing this, covering all the areas that we've drawn, making sure I don't shade the four feet, the feet that are facing closest to us. Okay, and that is basically an ATAT -AT walker. So, for those of you who are happy with doing that, then you can stop right there. But for those of you who want to add more detail onto it to make this look even better, then we shall keep doing that with our HB pencils, or our H pencils, and I will start showing you where the things go. So firstly, uh, we will start with the main center compartment again. That's usually the easiest one to do. So over here, let me just lightly draw this in. There's like a round, a rectangular shape with rounded corners that go here. And this is actually the boarding hatch for where all the troopers get in and out. And then over here, there are two lines that come up, which basically follow the shape of these lines, the angles, sorry, of these lines. And then there's another hatch here. So all along the side here, there are two of these hatches as well. They're parallel to these ones, but they're larger than this hatch. It's roughly rectangular in shape as well. Squarish, but also with just angled sides. Okay, what do we need to add? Okay, so next thing is, um, it's hard to see from far away, but these, the armored backs actually have armor plating on them. So we will draw that in. So it actually comes up here and that goes up and zags around and then it ends at this point. So it just goes right parallel to this one. And then this one also has its own, oh, and that's it for that side. And then this one also has its own helmet panel. The camera is parallel to that one. And this one goes near the bottom, but doesn't cross over to the fuel tank. And it curves up and goes across. And then it goes all the way back up. So I'm just defining the back a bit more. Okay, and that's done for that. And then this panel that covers the drive controllers uh, roughly in the middle of this section, there are three long rectangles here. And then there are three lines. There's, there's a longest line that goes across here, shorter one, and then a smaller one. And then this one just has three that go smaller. They don't get any longer like this one here does. Now for each of these leg joints, where these joints are. So we'll just try and make this circle more profound. So, oh, while we're here then, we can actually rub out these lines if they're too strong. If you have an HB pencil, because the drive controllers stay behind the legs, they do not, they cannot be seen from the front. Okay, that looks better. Again, another circle and just lightly sketch your circles in. Circles are very, very hard to draw to, and to get used to. And then, okay, so the next bit of detail that you want will be on the legs. Again, another rectangle piece that goes about up to here and then it squares off there. And then there's actually another one that joins up to here to this piece. We'll do the same over here. And then for the next leg, there are two thinner looking cylindrical bits that kind of run down here. And there's a line over there. And then we'll do that for this side as well. And just make sure that these lines are running parallel with the legs as well. And then the bottom one has kind of looks like a rectangle as well, but it curves up almost as it gets to the bottom. 
And again, whenever you need to, feel free to pause the video so you can see what I'm doing and just take your time because I have drawn this quite a few times now. So I'm very used to where all the parts are. Plus I also actually have a bit of reference in front of me, which I'll show you later. Um, and then the inside of these joints actually have another round bit. And then there's like these little two lines that kind of make it look like a giant screwdriver. That's giant screw, flathead screw. And this one is the same, draw another small one inside. We can add another one of these. Another one here. Inside. We can add another one of these. Now these flared out sections. Can I adjust the lines? So I need to get rid of that. These flared out sections have like two soft looking round things. Soft as in they're not very, very indented. They're just lightly out there. And then there's actually two smaller ones, which is what's holding in these luggage handles for the feet. Now the feet also have a pattern that kind of dips down, comes up and goes down again. But we won't really, really be seeing those at all. Nor will we actually see those in the movie aside from the really close up shots. Okay, now there's a bottom bit that sticks out at the bottom here as well. And then there are also bits that run along here as well. And there's another panel here. Now for the neck, the neck actually has like a brace that comes down like this, which I've never noticed before until I started drawing this today. Another one here. And then there's what looks like corrugated tubing, which is just tube with bumpy bits. That makes this up. And then over the head, the corner here, there's a little bit here that sticks this box. And then there's another bit here, and then there are lines underneath here as well. And there are also three thicker rectangular bits on the heavy laser cannon. Otherwise, that's pretty much finished. That's basically your AT-80 Walker. So what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to just go over this in 2B pencil, uh, just to make it look sharper as well. And then we'll get back and I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. So I'll quickly go through this 2B pencil, just so you can see. Um, and we'll fast forward it, just so you don't have to sit through here and watch me do it in real time. But let's go. Oh, one important thing to note is, so as you're using the 2B pencil, and you're bringing out all these lines. So have thick, stronger, bolder lines. And when your pencil starts to slowly get blunt on one side, spin it around as you draw, while you're drawing, to try and keep getting that sharper side. And once it becomes completely blunt, that it's kind of not sharp and crisp anymore, absolutely do use the pencil sharpener to sharpen your pencil again. Otherwise, you will lose that really great detail that you're aiming for. Okay, we can go again.
Okay, so that is pretty much all the fine detail of the 2B that we've added in as well. And just to yeah, make the lines look sharper and also darker as well. Um, so one more thing that we're going to do is I am going to uh, very quickly after this show you how to quickly do a snow speeder from a side view. So you can in fact just draw your own little recreation of Empire Strikes Back famous Hoff's battle scene. Um, and yeah, I will quickly do that and just show that to you. And then after that as well, I will draw a whole fully finished piece um, just to show you what it can look like when you just want to, yeah, draw something that tells a story. So uh, welcome back. So this has taken me just about 10, 15 minutes to do. And so as you can see, I've just quickly drawn in tiny little ones, uh, snow speeders and AT-ATs far away into the distance and I've added a bit of landscape just to show mountains in the back. And also another one here. Now the reason why I've done them so far away of course is because just for the sake of this piece of artwork, I don't want to draw another one so closely because there'd be a lot of detail I'd need to add in, but just far enough away to get the idea that there's something going on. And then also just two snow speeders zooming by closer um, because it would have looked a bit silly to have just one on one far away each time, which was a bit too convenient. So I just did another one nearby because they usually travel in pairs. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for me. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a pretty lengthy one and it was very, very fun to do. It's been a quite a while since I've done one of these. But anyway, uh, for more videos, you can go to ccoc.vic.gov.au and click on library at home. And then also you can go onto our YouTube channel and look us up there for more videos. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed it.